بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين. We begin by praising Allah and sending peace and blessings upon the final prophet, the prophet Muhammad, and his family and companion and all those who follow him until the last day. Today we will have a very fairly short but at the same time detailed discussion. Myself, Brother Ismail Buluk and Brother Abdurrahim McCarthy, we're going to touch upon today the issue of Valentines. And we know that this is practiced by so many, even Muslims around the world, and many view this as being something that is very trivial and very small, and it's just a bit of fun, and what's the problem? So today we'll discuss, firstly, Brother Abdurrahim will take us through the Sharia aspects of this, and the, how this is an innovation, and how the Islamic law, and how Islam views innovations and then I will go a bit through the history and we will see the, the serious and really very dangerous origins of the festival or the celebration of the Valentines. So we'll go over to Brother Abdurrahim. Assalamu alaikum brother. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa usalli wa usallim alil mab'uth rahmatan lil alameen nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. And in reality when we talk about Valentine's Day any, is it halal? Is it haram? And what Brother Ismail mentioned was very important, and that is a lot of people, you know, it's just having fun. It's nothing serious. It's no big deal. April's full. You know, all of these holidays, you know, we're, we're just celebrating Christmas with our neighbors. These type of things, like it's not really a big deal. But Valentine's Day, it's haram in Islam for several reasons. First of all, because it's an innovation into the religion. And innovation, it has a very high status when it comes to of the things that are uh, status meaning that of the dangers when it comes to things that are haram because they like the scholars mentioned is that when it comes to iblis the mo most beloved things to him first of all is uh, the shirk that he loves the shirk and second of all after the shirk even before the major sins it comes to the bid'ah the innovation in the religion so we see now that in this innovation how dangerous is in islam the prophet he said uh, whoever invents into this affair of ours anything which is not from it then it is rejected and we see the dangers of the innovation as well the scholars mentioned that the person of the bid'ah he's more beloved to Iblis than the person of Ma'asiyah the major sin why? because the person who has the major sin he knows he's doing something wrong he'll say uh, you know make dua to Allah that he'll forgive me that I'll be able to make toba. but the person who innovates something, innovates something he thinks he's doing something good and we talk about Eid now they call it in Arabic Eid al-Hub right mm, which is yeah. it's, it's a form of Eid it's a celebration uh, and we know in Islam we only have two Eids okay and the Prophet says he mentioned as he, when he came to Medina والسلام, that Allah when he found them celebrating different Eids that were not from uh, uh, or other before Islam he said verily Allah has given you two Eids that are better than these Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And Eid is an act of worship. This is what a lot of people don't realize. That Eid is from the ibadat. It's from the acts of worship. Even the scholars of Islam, they mentioned that uh, Eid uh, in, or the ayad, the different holidays that are celebrated, they said it's one of the major things that you celebrate when it comes to uh, the people's religion. It's one of the, the keys of any religion, any faith, that what it's built on, it's built on the uh, the, the ayah, the holidays that they celebrate. So it has a big, big status. It's from something very important in any religion, the holidays. So when you celebrate somebody else's holidays, another uh, religion's holiday, it's actually very, very dangerous, even more dangerous than other things you could be uh, doing with them. And this leads us to the next thing. We talk about the innovation, and, that, and then that is the issue of the tashabbu, which is imitating uh, the non-Muslims. When we imitate the non-Muslims, the danger of this is the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Man that whoever imitates a nation that he's from him. So it's a serious thing, imitating somebody. This is what people don't realize. And also he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, is something in another hadith, that al-maruma man ahab, the, the person will be with the person he loves. And he will be sent forth on the day of judgment, as it came in the other hadith, uh, with those who he followed in this dunya. He will be sent forth with them on the day of judgment. So this shows us the danger, danger of that as well. And another thing which shows us the danger of, this, of celebrating this holiday is in our time what it's calling to is to do that which is haram because it's not really talking about the main thing between a man and his wife it's talking about between a, a man and women he doesn't know and getting to won't you be my valentine as they say right mm -hmm. so what happens is people fall into a haram 
and many women are fooled in falling into that which is haram and displeasing to Allah. And uh, this is, that, is it? pretty much like a one night stand. You think about it, it. Exactly. Be my Valentine for the day. Or exactly. Just like on Christmas, give me a kiss just today under the mistletoe. Exactly. It's like it's like a one you know one, it, one night stand kind of thing. That's what it leads to. So and this is what the, what's meant by it. As you'll, you'll brush over in the history. So we need to be aware as Muslims to stay away from this because of the dangers that it has on, on First of all, it's an issue of aqidah as well, as you'll probably show now in the history, that it's something that comes from the aqidah. It's something that t touches the, the belief of the Muslim. And this is what a lot of Muslims don't understand. A lot of these holidays, they touch the belief system when it comes like the Christmas, the, the celebrating birthdays. A lot of these things, people don't realize the dangers of them. And we'll say at the end, as we pass it over to Brother Ismail, talk a little bit about the history, is that it's haram in any way, shape, or form for a Muslim to take part in Valentine's Day, whether he celebrates it himself, even helping others celebrate it, selling things in your store that has to do with Valentine's Day is haram. It's a major sin. Doing anything that helps even non-Muslims, and especially if you help Muslims, even worse. And that's why the scholars, they said that celebrating any holiday that, or making a new holiday in Islam, making a new Eid in Islam, new holiday, it's haram, even if it's for a Muslim uh, holiday. If you make it into Islam, that's haram. But when you make it something which comes from the non-Muslims, it makes it even more haram, even more dangerous. So we need to be aware of this and be careful as Muslims so don't fall into the traps of shaitan and do that which is displeasing. Obviously, we don't have much time. There's a lot of other things, but I just want to focus on these three issues. The issues of it being innovation into our religion, the issue of it being a tashabbu or imitation of the kufar that shows us danger. And the third thing that we brushed over briefly also uh, was, was the issue of what they are calling to, of falling into zina, and that was just pleasing to Allah. And I'll pass it over to my brother Ismail, quickly give us some of the history about where this Valentine's Day, where it actually comes from. Zakhallah khair. Mm. Um, well, it, basically from the hist historical side of things, it has two aspects. It has the Christian aspect, and it has the paganism aspect. You'll see, if we start off from the Christian side of things, there were n numerous early Christian martyrs that were named Valentine. There were two specific ones. One was the, uh, that were killed, executed on the 15th of, uh, 14th of February. One was the Valentine of Rome. And the other one was, was Valentine of Terni. And if we specifically look at Valentine of Terni, because he, or he became a Saint Valentine, because his story is very much focused around what we see in modern day Valentines. He was, uh, he was basically met by the Roman Emperor Claudius II in person. And the Emperor was very impressed with him and he tried to convert him into Roman paganism. And Valentine did the opposite. He tried to make him into a Christian. And what was happening at that time is the Roman emperor did not allow his army to marry because they would become preoccupied with, with their wives. So he made it haram as such, forbidden for a man to marry. So this Valentine would secretly, being a Christian priest, would secretly marry them. And he got caught and he got put in prison. And there is one thing that's supposedly attributed to him is that he was basically supposed to have uh, 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 healed the prison keeper's daughter, who was a blind girl. And what they said is that after he cured her blindness, she would come and visit him, and they s s formed some kind of relationship. And then before he was executed, he was supposedly, and this is a very big myth, even most historians say this is something that was added much later, he was supposed to have written her a card, a good buy card, saying to her, uh, basically saying to her, uh, you know, goodbye or, fr you know, from your Valentine. So that's from the... So, so that's where it comes from then. That's from the, you know, yeah. from, the, from the Christian side of things. But if you look, if we go into the ancient Roman side of things, what you'll see from there is that the festival of Valentines has a lot of its roots from the Roman pagan festival called Lupa Calia. Now this was literally a story about a wolf that would chase a girl. And this is where, the, as Brother Abdurrahim mentioned, the serious issues of Aqidah, yeah. this is where you really, it really hits you here. Is you find that they had a festival, they would sacrifice a wolf and a dog. So all we, when we say sacrifice, what are we talking about? They are sacrificing a wolf and a dog to Roman gods. A com clear aspect of shirk. Major kufr, major shirk. So this is what they would do. Then they would they would take the hide of the wolves and they would uh, have the naked women queue up or they would whip them with this and then they would put the names of all the women in a, a jar and from there they would select the, the women and they would basically have 
to put it in such words, they would have sexual relations with the women, mostly for a one-night stand. So it was like a very big kind of festival of orgy. And they believed that when whipping these women with the sacrifice uh, skin of the wolf or the dog, that this would make the women fertile. So again, more shirk. That by using this dead animal this, sacrifice, this is what the people are not getting is that this stuff. It's very, it's very in, in depth in the aqid issue. This is the big danger of it. But when we study into the history, we see this, and people don't. People, this is what people don't seem to realize. So I mean, that's right. And even we see that the the modern Valentine we see, but we see what happened in the 15th century. Uh, uh, what happened in the you know in the, in the later in the later centuries? You find that the Pope Gelasius one, he in the fifth century, he decided to combine the Valentine's Day, which was initially there to honor the martyr, and combine the Lupercalia into one to try. And he, his idea was we'll remove the pagan beliefs. But what happened is, as we see from history, is aspects of the pagan belief were removed, but they still kept the same thing, which was the alcohol and the, the looseness and the so-called love and fertility. So we see that all of this is based on the major shirk, beliefs and we really have to end it up now uh, and we thank brother Abdurrahim again and inshallah we will make this a regular uh, series inshallah hopefully every bi-weekly will come to you with this discussion show inshallah uh, with brother Abdurrahim uh, benefiting from his knowledge inshallah to address lots of issues and lots of important issues and until we see you next time we thank you for spending the time with us wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh